ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages. All right, now we talk about rounding. And if you turn it over, it says what place value? So we have two answers again on this. That's why it has, has two lines. So we're going to have to identify the place value of the underlined digit, and we're going to have to round each one to the underlined digit. So let's look at the first one first. And I think rounding we make more difficult than it actually is. Okay, which of these numbers is underlined? The seven. The seven. And Brindley, what place value is the seven in? Hundred. Hundredths. So that would be on one of our lines, the hundredths. So once we identify what place value is being rounded, which Brindley said is the hundredths place, we look at the number behind it. Now the number being rounded is the only number we're going to add something to. And we're either going to add 1 or 0 to the underlined number. And we decide that based on the number behind it. So up here, above the number, I'm going to add something to that 7. It's either going to be a 1 or a 0. But I'm going to add something to that number, to the number I'm rounding. Okay, I look behind it. The number behind it determines what I'm adding. So the number behind it is a 3. So what am I going to add to that 7? Yes. I'm going to add a 0. If the number behind it is 5 or greater, then we add 1. If the number behind it is 4 or less, then we add 0. Okay, and do the math, actually do the math. And I could put this zero on at the end. I don't move the three down. Anything after the lined number does not, it becomes zeros. Anything after the line number becomes zeros. And honestly, I could leave that, z that zero off because 67 hundredths is the same as 670 thousandths. It's like I have 67 hundredths, and then Courtney brings up zero thousandths to me and so I didn't change the number at all zero thousandths all right let's look at uh, four and two hundred eighty two thousandths we have this place value underlined and remember when you're doing assignments or you're doing tests that are in my class that I'm the one giving that are from me use your journal you have a place value chart in your journal. You should have one in your paper journal, and if you don't, I know you have one in your electronic journal, which you can find on the stream, which I told you all to open up and look at the other day, so hopefully you are. Okay. All right, Ava, the underlined digit is in what place? The tenths place. So that would be my first answer, the tenths place. So... I am going to add something to that underlined number. It's either going to be 1 or it's going to be 0. And to determine that, I look behind it. Behind it is an 8. My rule is if the number behind it is 5 or greater, I add 1. If it's 4 or less, I add 0. So Ava, what am I going to add to it? A 1. A 1. Then I actually do the math. 2 plus 1 is 3. In front of it, it's going to stay there. Behind it, I can put these zeros on or I can leave it as 4 and 3 tenths. Doesn't change the value. I could put a million zeros, as Brindley says, behind it, and it still wouldn't change the value. Oh my gosh, my time is flying here. All right, let's... All right, we have 12 and 917 thousandths. 12 and 917 thousandths. Bree, the underlined number is 2. What's the place value for that? The ones. The ones place. Or you may see it sometimes written as the nearest whole number. 
okay? Because everything in front of the decimal point is a whole number. Everything behind it are just parts of a whole number. Okay, so we're going to round to the ones place. Now, Bree, the number behind it, so I'm going to either add 1 or I'm going to add 0 to that underlying number. The number behind it is a 9, so what am I going to add to that underlying number? 1. 1. Makes it a 3, so 13, or 13.0, or 13.00, or 13.000. But once you figure out what you're rounding to, underline it, and above it, put the plus sign. And then you're either going to add 1 or you're going to add 0. Now, why does he make us add 1 or add 0? That is an excellent question. Thank you for asking, Courtney. What if I had the number... And I'm rounding to the tenths place. I had 12 and 99 hundredths, and I'm rounding to the tenths place. Okay? So the tenths place is what I'm going to add to, and I'm going to look behind it at the hundredths place. Okay? The hundredths place is a 9. So what am I going to add to the tenths place? A 1. A 1. I make you put that adding 1 up there because... We're not just changing the 9 to the next biggest number, because that's not the way it works. That's not how any of this works. Have you ever seen that commercial? Okay, I have. All right, so now I want you to actually do the math. What is 9 plus 1? 10. 10. And 1 plus 2? 3. So this, if I'm rounding to the nearest tenths place, this rounds to 13, because when I add 1, I have to regroup it. I have 10 tenths, which means that's equal to one whole and zero tenths. Well, it would be like 10 dimes is equal to one dollar. Ava? On the paper, where we put the ones place? Yeah, if this, no, this would be the hundredths or tenths place. I just made this number up, though. Well, what about the real one? Is it? You want to do the real one, then, is what you're saying? Yeah, what is, if, what is the place where you put the real one? Oh, uh, let's. No, it'd be rounded to the tenths place because that was what was underlined. The example I gave, not that problem 12 and 917 thousandths. Yeah, that's the one. Okay, yeah, that's the ones place or the whole number. Okay. All right, so let me put two up here and then I'm going to let you do those two. We're going to look at seven and eight. And that's underlined and eight is eight. And the six is underlined. So try those two real quick. I want to know the place value that is being rounded. And I want to know what is the answer that it's rounded to. The place value that's being rounded and what the rounded number actually is. So I'll give you a second to try those two. Emily Kate, what place value is this five in? The tenths. Tenths. You are the smartest Emily Kate in this room right now. I don't even know that. The smartest in this room right now. So the five is underlined. I'm going to add either one or zero to that five, Emily Kate. I look behind it. What am I going to add to that five? One. One. If I do the math, I'm going to have six tenths or six hundred thousandths. But that'd be easy. 
PZ Raw Chicken Squeezy. Miss Balios. Or as your mom's called, Miss B. At, at school, right? What place value is this six in? Ones. You can put ones, you can put whole number, either one. Because you're rounding to the ones place or to the nearest whole number. All right, so I'm going to either add one or zero to this, Miss Balinos. I'm going to add one. I already put that up there for you. I just told you the answer. So my answer here would be seven, rounding to the nearest whole number. The biggest thing I can tell you, the biggest thing I can beg of you, is to take your time, show the work, don't try to do this in your head, because I can tell you right now, my brain's like an Etch-a-Sketch. Y'all know what Etch-a-Sketches yes, are? I have. Okay. And so as soon as I turn it, everything that's in there is erased. Because that's what happens with Etch-a-Sketches. Yes. Take the time. Work it out. Because when I make answer keys, that's what I do. If I'm making an answer key for an assignment, I don't. I make, if I make the problem, I solve the problem too. That's why sometimes on the answer keys, there's a mistake. It's because I make mistakes as well. But I go through all of this to solve the problem when I make the answer key. So you should go through all of this to solve the problem when you're doing the assignment. Make pennies. Boom. Shakalaka. Peace out. God bless. Love ya. Do something kind today. Please subscribe and comment below if you watch this. And where you live and from, the not your address, but you know, like what country or city. That way, I know Save it's patient.